You know, a lot of people tend to believe, and, and perhaps rightly so, so that that's the first family of films. You know, Prithvi Raj Kapoor and then Raj Kapoor and blah blah, and you know, generations. But actually, if one were to just put that in terms of female ancestry, mm -hmm. you are the first family of films from the female point of view. Definitely. Your great grandmother <laughs> was an actress. Your grandmother was an actress. Your mum was an actress. You're an actress. In fact, in fact, that's a book that you should write because I'm trying to read up as much as I could and it's just, it's just full of names from Motilal who used to be the original angry young man before Amitabh Bachchan to Nalini Jaiwant. These are all people who are from your, from your mom's side. I'm related to a lot of people. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, can you take us can through that whole uh, scene? Like, okay, let's just start with your great grandmother, Ratan Bhai. She, in fact, um, well, she became an actress, and correct me if I'm mistaken, and of course you can take it from there. She became an actor two years before your grandmother did. Like she made her debut two years before at the age of 40. She was a singer as well. Just take us through through that life. You know, honestly, I cannot take you through that life. Why not? Because of the fact that I knew them as just my great-grandmother, my grandmother and my mother. And uh, they were amazing women. Sure. I didn't pay so much attention to what they did on screen so much as I did pay attention to what they did off it. Uh, so my mama, as I call my great-grandmother, was this awesome woman who was so strong, so lucid, clear, intelligent and uh, even at the age of uh, 80, she was 86 when she died. But, uh, and I was 11 years old, mm -hmm. or 11 or 12 years old, and I remember she, uh, she was the one that I was closest to, I was attached to, and uh, she would tell me all the stories, I would sleep with her, she would feed me, I was, I was hers, mm -hmm. completely and wholly and solely, and she was an amazing woman, she barely ever left the house, but always knew what was happening inside the kitchen, and, uh, <laughs> and in everybody's lives, so, and she was a very, very strong clear, practical, down-to-earth woman. And of course, there was my grandmother, who was again one very, very strong personality, very again, very, very driven, very, very practical, very, very, uh, you know, my grandmother was all about what works and what doesn't work. So I had these awesome examples in front of me. I had my mother, who was another really, really, really amazing, uh, you know, the way she handled her life, the decisions that she's made in her life, um, for that matter, uh, career-wise and non-career-wise, both ways. Um, I, I really respect that. Mm. I truly and deeply respect that. And even from an objective point of view, if I don't, if I was not her daughter as well, I still genuinely uh, respect the kind of strength it takes to stand up and say that this is it and you know no more so far no further and uh, you know do what she wanted to do when she wanted to do it and stand up and say that okay I'm ready to face the consequences also and if there is uh, uh, you know just because somebody else is doing it not necessary that I have to do it I will stand up and make my own path. Like give us an example of something. Like, like, like honestly it's a very silly example but it's typically mom like I remember uh, once uh, so, um, I saw a picture of my mom and I was like, Mom, you wore a lungi Do you, to a party? You, wear a, you wore a lungi to a party? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, but so cool it was. I only had them stitched and I had them made. I liked them. They were super comfortable and I thought they were very stylish. So I had this slit up to here and uh, yeah, I wore the lungi to the party and I was like, Mom, you wore a lungi to a party. I couldn't get over that part of it. Uh, so yeah, that was her and uh, she did things her way, the way she wanted to, um, you know, how she liked and what she thought was right. And that and I, that in itself, I felt, was a huge lesson to me as a child, rather than t trying to tell me that you need to think for yourself mm. or tell me that, you know, this is, the decision is yours, whatever you may do. She showed it to me. So it was automatically when you see that, it's a much more stronger learning experience than it would be just with her telling me things you know and and w one of the other things that she did which i found uh, which i found amazing is that you know my mom had this bad habit of abusing she had the best galis mm. like the best like and and she was known for them so she would have this uh, like when she went on set and things like that like people would actually like uh, i said madam so like like literally poke her and needle her till she turned around and gave her one of her famous galis and then we like ha theek hai abhi din acha chalega you know, that was the kind of uh, feel to her. But um, I remember after we were born, you can't say shit and you can't say this and you can't say that. And I was like, 
but both uh, i turned around and i was like but you abuse so she actually turned around she was like okay i won't do it from now and she gave it up it took her time she put a swear jar at home and uh, she put money in it every time she did it by mistake but the point is that she gave it up and that was again another fabulous uh, learning experience i remember that so clearly because i remember that i takes an immense strength of will to give up something for your own health yes but it takes an even stronger will to do it for somebody that you love mm. i feel and especially since she could have just said oh just listen to me because i told you so which is the most famous mother's yeah, words yeah. ever you know because i told you so you have to do this because i told you so but she didn't and she answered every one of my questions every time i had a question as a child and she told me something and i said why mom she had an answer for it and if she didn't have an answer for it she actually went outside and found one for me that was acceptable so i think uh, she was she still is uh, an amazing uh, she's my hero like a lot of people ask me like you know is helicopter ila like uh, your mom if you are ila is uh, is your mom uh, ila as well and i was like no my mom is the total opposite of ila and i hope and pray that i am one day brave enough uh, to be like my mom because she gave me the most amazing upbringing ever ever i think uh, she was one of the first people who taught me about and she taught me things out of sheer life out of sheer example like like things like charity compassion um uh, you know uh, things like she would tell me things like you know if you get angry you know the other person wins and I, when i was a kid i was like so frustrated when i used to hear that i was be like no but i still want to get angry what do you mean i no it's not just unfair but uh, she was like yeah do you want the other person to win or do you want to win if you want to win then you have to let it go let your anger go and uh, 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 stuff like the each one teach one foundation adopting children and uh, paying for a girl child's future paying for for children to study for little the girls to yes, yes exactly so i'm saying that she did all this without saying anything to anybody without making a big deal out of it without uh, making a point out of it or uh, you know trying to shove it down in a, your throat in a preachy way it was just something that she did around us so it was something that we were just taught as a natural part of life whether it was death whether it was life whether it was success whether it was failure whether it was uh, even for that matter her marriage with my father um after a point she did have discussions with us about it and i remember asking her this as a child that you know mom uh, you know uh, why can't you and dad be together and uh, she turned around and told me the most she told me the most amazing thing that as a child i felt worked for me also and as an adult i felt worked for me also she was like you know we are better people when we are not with each other and i was like okay that makes sense mm-hmm. that does make sense to me that uh, you know okay so she had an answer for every question that i asked about the meaning of life about like death like i put it um I, we had we had relatives who passed away in the middle and we had of course we had fights we had gigantic ginormous fights in the family as well and uh, you know it was all talked about it was all discussed like family disputes you mean yeah and right. all talked about all discussed nothing was hidden from us so whether we are talking about failures we're talking about success what is it that you got there just that she told me she told me you know like if we're talking about death for that matter she would tell me you know it's not about death what is death and you know you sit down and you talk about death and why is but nobody should be scared of it it's like you know how your body gets old your soul is eternal so your body gets old and yes you have to trade up for a better body or a newer version of it and uh, it's it's that's it that's it so don't be scared don't be scared of anything never let fear i remember her words so clearly never let fear rule you never let fear rule your decisions whatever you do in life uh, so yeah lots of stuff that uh, you know she's told me has made a lot of difference to where and who i am today because all that was just an upbringing at that point of sure. time but uh, it made a difference when yeah, i was faced with right. life yeah. you know when i had things in front of me that i had to face and i had to get over i was like okay my mom's words were like ringing in my ears you also had an extremely strong grandmother yes i mean I as did. in your mom had extremely strong yes, mom as yes, well yes yes i mean she if i'm not mistaken actually directed 
your mom's first film hamari beti and um, okay that was that was my mom's film again that's her career part but personally she was i think 65 years old and she would drive up i was in boarding school in panchkani and she would drive up once a month in the battered beaten down ambassador car she would drive up take me down to get my dentist check up to get my braces done and drive me back for a drive up on friday evening drive me down to pune do my check up and then drive me back on sunday drop me to school and then drive back to bombay that same day so that was the kind of woman that she was my mother was busy working she could could not come for some appointments or not but my grandmother came every month like clockwork she took care of me i mean like in every which way that she could disciplined me took care of me was there for me constantly and uh, that's what i remember of her so when you talk about a kind of a magnanimous strength till the day she was uh, till she was again she also passed away when she was like 84 85 years old but she was driving till like a year before she died she used to drive her little bright blue maruti 800 that she had in lonavla and uh, she was known as the queen of lonavla and uh, she would drive to the market buy her groceries come back she had six dogs she had a house she lived by herself so i mean these are the kind of independent women that i have seen all all of my life and they never tried to tell me never talked to me about women's empowerment <laughs> sure. never Together. none of that those Understood. were all words that were yeah. just not there you so know it's all jargon anyway yeah exactly yeah. i mean here we, we we talk about it but it's honestly uh these women really showed me what strength was all about it takes an immense amount of strength uh to live alone i feel it takes an immense especially when you're older i feel that as you get older you maybe get a little scared of uh, living alone but she lived in lonavla and i lonavla still does not have much of medical care let me put it mm. that way so she lived in lonavla and uh, with her dogs and whatever and we used to go and meet her of course and etc 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 but still i i think she was one of the strongest people that i know so much right yeah, yeah. right So your family would be Shobhna. I mean, Samarth Mukherjee. Samarth Mukherjee. Right. Yes. <laughs> Is there a reason why you don't keep a surname the same way that your mom Honestly, didn't? Honestly, I was I was too confused at that point of time okay. to decide on whether it should be Mukherjee or what it should Samarth be Mukherjee, at that point. Yeah. yeah, what it should be. So I, I honestly, I I just told Dad. I said, you know, let's not get into this hassle only, and let's just keep it only Kajol. I don't want anybody to associate anything with me. and um, i don't want to be associated with anything i knew there was all this pressure you know all this expectation from being tanuja's daughter nutan's niece shobhna samarth's granddaughter shashidhar mukherjee's granddaughter from my father's side i mean like those whole yeah. other lineage all together that we're talking about from that side <coughs> so i mean there were everybody in the film industry uh, mostly i am related or no most of You're the people really in the everyone film in bollywood <laughs> everyone <laughs> Pretty I don't know much. about that, <laughs> but so, yeah. Okay, uh, to come back to your name, what's your name on the passport? Kajol Devgan. Oh, Kajol Devgan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But that's after marriage. What was it before? Ah, uh, Kajol Mukherjee. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.